So let's talk about this warm up here. Who can tell me what H of zero was? Zero, which means where did this frog start? He started on the ground right there. I like to draw little pictures sometimes. Okay, and then what we get with H of 0.8? Zero. zero, which means he's also on the ground here at 0 0.8 seconds. He's on the ground again. So if it's telling us this frog hopped, what happened? It hopped in between that. Yeah, it jumped up and it came down. All right. So the next question is, how much time happened for it to re reach its maximum? Hadley, how do you know 0 0.4 seconds? Yeah, so right between the zeros is the vertex. And then this isn't on there, but how high did this froggy jump? Yeah. Do you know? How high did it jump? Micah? All you got to do is this. At four seconds, or 0.4 seconds, it jumped how high? Hadley? 12 inches. Which is like, whatever, man, that's just a foot. But if you're like two inches tall, that's six times your height. That means I'm, I'm jumping like 30-some feet, man. That's a pretty good jump. But if, if it scaled up the same uh, what was your question, Will? Um, but when we put 5 in, it came out as 1,125. When you put 5 into this? 5 as T. Yeah, but not the height one. Because this is going to be a huge, huge negative number if you put 5 into T. It had to be negative. Right? Uh, so something happened in your calculator or something. Here's where we're going to put things to context. If you catch a hiccup today, what do I want you to go back to in your mind? This. Big ideas first, and then try to use your big ideas. So here's our function. This function is launching a pumpkin. I don't know if anybody's ever done that, but the last time I did it was at like an apple orchard, and you could uh, eat these pumpkins uh, in this field, and the goats would eat them, which is a, a brilliant business model. You had to buy this pumpkin to shoot, and then their animals got fed with the pumpkin you bought. Kind of smart. B smart business model. Anyway, here's the function. Here's the function. Right there. Your job is to say, what does the two mean in context? What, what's up with that negative 4.9 T squared? If we graph it, will it open up or down? Where do you think the vertical intercept would be? What about the horizontal intercepts? I'll handle the decimal stuff, so you're going to stop after five, okay? Let's go. I think you guys notice when you get to number five, things get a little tricky, right? Do you guys notice that? That's, that's kind of by design. So let's start here. Let's start where it's not tricky. What does the two mean in context? Who can raise your hand and tell me? Great. Starting high of what? Okay. So I'm going to write pumpkin shot from two feet. Okay. At zero seconds, it's at two feet. That's the how high. We're pulling that catapult back. What about the negative 4.9 T squared? This one's a little... A little trickier. Yeah, Ellie? Yeah. And I know you guys are used to seeing that negative uh, 16 T squared. That's like perfect conditions, no wind resistance. That's like the theoretical one. Sometimes you're going to throw in like more actual, like a punk can catch much more wind than a bowling ball, right? And there's going to be, and the, the negative 16 T squared is just like perfect. So if we graph the equation, will it open up or down? Down. We know for two reasons. It looks like that, right? So that's opening down. Also, what do we notice about our A term from yesterday? It's negative. So it would be 4.9 If it opened up. No, if it was for 5 to be horizontal. Horizontal? So the 4 point... Where it's 4.97. That's what you got? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's, t let's talk about the vertical intercept first. It would be at two feet. We already talked about that, right? Did anybody guess and check to get that horizontal? It's zero. It's what? It's zero, zero. It's, no, it's starting at two, so it, never, it doesn't start at zero, zero. How many seconds? How, how, many, how much time did anybody get to where it hits the ground? With your skill set, there's only guess and check for this. Willa, what'd you? You got 4.9 in your calculator? Okay. Well, let's check this out. We're going to go to Desmos. Is that zero? So the whole point of this is we're going to acknowledge 
that standard form is currently not the greatest way to get a zero, right? I mean, you can get the y-intercept nice. Yeah. In this case, the y-intercept isn't even a zero. So let's go to Desmos and see what's up. Okay. I'm going. I'm going. Oh. That's from yesterday. Ooh, the suspense of reload. So let's check out this x-intercept right here. We got 4.92. So not exactly 4.9. That was really close. 4.92 works. And let's see how high this went. 2.418 seconds to go. 30.658. So the horizontal intercepts, we've got negative something. Does that make sense in context? Yes. Negative time? No. No, because we started zero time at two feet, and then it hit the ground over here at 4.92 seconds. And the, this right here, our vertex, would be how long it takes to get to the highest point. Everybody good? With all the context? Okay. So you're given uh, a similar context, two different versions of the function. Player A, you have this graph. Player B, you have this function. They're hitting a baseball, and this is what's happening over time. You need to answer these questions. Which one stayed in flight longer? Which one reached a greater height? And how can you find the height that each one was hit? Now, if you get stuck, think big ideas, all right? Think, think stuff like the y-intercept happens when? X is zero. The X intercept happens when? Y is, zero. y is zero. Okay, stuff like that. Let's go. All right, let's start by looking at one. Which one is in the air longer? People are saying player A. How do we know? So if I want to know how long it was in the air, what would I be looking for? An X intercept. So let's find both of them, okay? What do I need this to equal to find the x-intercept? If I get that whole thing equals zero, what's zero times the other junk? Zero. zero. Okay, so I need this to equal zero. That means t would need to equal negative one sixteen. So that's one of my intercepts. Does that intercept make sense in context? No. No, you can't have negative time. So that means... This baseball is not being hit off the ground, which also makes sense. You don't hit baseballs off the ground. Okay? This ain't golf. Even in golf, sometimes I don't tee. So, everybody see why this is one over here to the left somewhere would be negative 116? If you don't, you're missing a big idea. If I can get this whole thing to equal zero, zero times the other junk is zero. Negative 16 times negative 116 is one. And one minus one is zero. If you're struggling to just see that like I see it, you can also do this. Plus one, negative 16t equals one, divided by negative 16, and there it is. Okay, you can always, for the same reason, we go with that negative one sixteenth, zero, right? Everybody sees that intercept? Does that intercept help us how long it's in the air at all? No, but still, it's like a theoretical intercept, okay? So this one, this would give me a time of Four seconds, which means it's hitting the ground earlier than the other one. Okay, next question. Which one is higher? Well, this one's a little tricky because um, unless this was a four-second pop fly straight up really fast or something, right, you would imagine maybe it doesn't go there. And our zeros to get to our vertex aren't like zero, zero on something. But guess what? Negative one-sixteenth is really close to zero. Did anybody try two seconds and see what they got? No, so I would have tried two seconds. If, and two seconds only got us to 66 feet if we had a G of two. Okay? So if we're thinking, I know it says don't draw anything, but if at two seconds it's 66 feet, is there any way to start down here somewhere and kind of do that? You can't, you know. Well, is there any way to get above this? No. But if we wanted to get the exact vertex, we would have to do... Uh, two, wait, 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 it's just about two. 
if we'd have to do 4 plus negative 1 16th and divide that by 2. And it's seriously something like 1 and 32 33rds is the x value of our I, vertex. I, I did the math. The yeah, what'd you get? The actual vertex is 66.015. No, 016, sorry. Yeah, so essentially, it is the two-second one, right? Because 32 33rds is almost a whole. So what that means is at two, it never gets as high, right? It goes like that, kind of, you know, but smoother. Okay, so which one gets the max, bigger maximum height, A or B? A. A. And how high? About 66. Either one of these worked, right? Just get real close, or you could get right in the middle and get your vertex. No new ideas, All right? No new ideas. Next up, we have an info gap. So you need to answer these questions. In order to do this, I will only give you certain information, and you must ask me the right question to get that information. So a rocket is being launched from the ground. How many seconds did it take to reach its highest point? Also, it was 8.8 .8 feet above the ground twice. How many seconds passed between the two 8.8s? So come up with a list of questions to ask me in order to answer these. So, you've got all the information you need to answer this question. Let's go. Thanks for asking good questions. All right, here we go. I'm drawing a really good picture right here, okay? This rocket shooting off the ground is coming down over here. I know that it came down at 1.6, okay? So, how long to reach the highest point? 0 0.8, because I know the highest point happens halfway between the zeros which are 0, 0, and 1.60, okay. I'm making an ordered pair here. We don't know the height. We actually don't have enough information for the height. I also know that I hit 8.8 .8 at 1.1, so somewere like here, let's say. 1.1, 8.8. So when else, right, because this is like symmetrical, that is 0.5 before it hit the ground, so it must have done a 0.5 after it left the ground. Everybody seeing that? It has to be symmetrical. So if 8.8 .8 happens right here, a half second before it hits the ground, that means it was a half second after it left the ground as well because it has to be symmetrical. All right. So instead, sidestep, instead of doing this one with you, we're going to, I can show you everything, but we're gonna go right to the lesson cool down together. I'm trying to get you some homework time in class. Okay, so you're gonna do this when you finish this. The homework is located on the 3D printer, but we're gonna go we're gonna go over this all together in about five minutes, okay? Also, I'm going to acknowledge that there's a typo on here. It means tennis ball, not beach ball. I know it's a it's a detail we're all wondering. So, the first question is, what are the zeros? And I'm going to acknowledge with you that this one does look a little different than some we've been seeing. So this one looks different, but there's no difference in big idea at all. What do I need that to equal to get the whole thing to equal zero? zero. I need it to equal zero. So if you're ever struggling with that, you could just write down this. I know I need this to equal zero. And that's an equation you could solve, right? I think we're all good with the one zero there. Now this one, to equal zero, I can see that negative 16 times one fourth gives, or times negative one fourth gives me the four I need. So negative one fourth, zero. That's my other zero. If you're struggling with that, just solve that equation. You know it needs to equal zero. That is a big idea in itself, right? So what do they tell us about the situation? It tells us the ground, right? And this one is trash. That does not help us with anything. That's theoretical with the function. If we have a negative x-intercept, that means it's not starting on the ground. Also makes sense. We're not hitting a tennis ball off the ground if we're playing tennis. Unless you're trying to jack up a tennis racket, okay? So... What height is it thrown then? Or no, this isn't right, we're throwing it. Well, how much time has passed when, when we're starting through it? How much time? Uh, when we're starting? Zero, zero. zero seconds. So I want to know zero time. If t is zero, I get negative four times negative one, right? If, this is, if t is zero and t is zero, that means at zero time, it is four feet. It's thrown from four feet high or hit from four feet high. All right. Big ideas. Guys, does this look a little different right here? Yep. Is it a different idea at all? No. no. 
Zero times junk equals zero. X-intercept happens when Y is zero. Y-intercept happens when X is zero.